it's hard to talk about because I'm, dude, I'm a person, you know? And so for me, it was like really hurtful at the time when certain things would happen. And, you know, my family at times wouldn't be on the road with me. So I had people around me that were like considered buddies and family and whatnot. And like, you know, like crazy stuff would happen. Like I'd be out partying and, uh, you know, somebody took a picture within my very tight group and then later tried to sell that photo to TMZ, which would then damage my career. I'm like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of things, I've got the industry saying he's not core because he's not going to hang with these guys and he's not coming to the premiere and he's not doing, you know what I mean? And I'm like, God, why would I want to be a part of this thing that's, you know, kind of doing that stuff to me, you know, it's kind of like high school type stuff. You know, I would tell somebody something, they would go tell, you know what I mean? And it was just like, oh my God, I trusted you and I can't trust too many people, but here I am, you know, and I, and I trusted you and you kind of betrayed my trust. And so why would I standard human stuff, you know, nothing to do with the sport. And so then that kind of like was what irked me, you know, and, and I got to say, like, it's become like, what feels like a popular sort of soundbite to say, like he's undeniably a champion, but you know, he doesn't really represent the sport. And I always thought that was so bizarre to me. And I got to say, you know, it was pretty disheartening to hear that come from Donna recently. I listened to the, you know, her podcast on the way down. I was like, wow, that's so heartbreaking, you know? Um, because like what part of me doesn't absolutely love and, breathe and die for the sport and bleed for it, you know, and show up to all the events and do all the stuff, you know what I mean? And, and so I always felt like a funny disconnect and it was such a weird thing to hear that come from her. Cause I was like, Oh, like, you know, you know, she, she mentioned me using my platform to sell things. And I was like, wow, that's so wild. Cause you are from a company that used me to sell things. You know what I mean? So I was just like, we, we worked with each other, you know, and, I love Donna. I love Jake. And, and I, I still love Donna. I would never, you know what I mean? Say anything about that family. And I feel, you know, tense talking about it. Cause I, I do truly love them so much, but like to hear that was very hard to hear. I was like, Oh wow. Like, you know, what is it? Was it the deals? Was it the, you know what I mean? Cause when I look back on my career and I go, God, like, the amount of stuff that I turned down was staggering, you know, like seven figure mm -hmm. deals for cologne, like these crazy things that like, I was like, I can't do that. I can't put myself or my sport in that place of like, look at where this is gone. You know what I mean? Like my biggest deal was Burton. Uh, then it was Red Bull and Oakley. I mean, these are pretty endemic brands. I mean, I'd say the one that was the most outside the box would be Target, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But at the time, you know, I was working with my brother. He was designing all the products. It's like, what a cool thing. My brother and I can work together as a fam and design this line and like make money together and have this thing. Of course I'm going to do that, you know what I mean? And then kind of to turn around and hear that I'm not core, I'm not this or that. And then I see the same people that are saying that I'm not core come out in a Tostitos pizza roll commercial where they pop out of bed and go, sup, bro, it's pizza time. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that is the sport and I just kind of missed it. But I always felt like, you know, we are a sport, you know, and we're and sure there is the stereotypical thing from, you know, to be stoners from when, when, uh, you know, I forget his name, who the, the Canadian downhill um, racer got busted for weed at Ger the Olympics. Gerbaldi or whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean? It just We just lived up to the hype. And I remember seeing that. I'm like, damn, well, that's not the legacy I want to live in. Mm. So what did I do after the Olympics? I'm like, dude, I said no to so many things. They're like, can you just like slide onto stage, you know, and Letterman's going to come over. He's going to take his beanie off. We're going to blast you with snow. And then this, and then you say, yeah, bro. And pop a Mountain Dew. And I, I'm like, oh my God, no, like absolutely not. I had to like be so calculated about the way I was representing not only myself, but like my sport. That's what you would think all the other riders were doing. So like, I don't know. I, I was in a really tough position, if you can imagine. Um, 
you know, there's my life and what I'm into at the time. Um, and then there's like kind of the needs of the sport and then to be the outward face of the sport for so long. I mean, I like to think I did a pretty good job, but I'm, I'm a, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm human. <laughs> like I made mistakes. Like I've, I've done, you know, dumb things, made dumb decisions and things, you know, like anyone, you know, I, I can't have that perfect slate, but I think through and through, I've always cared about the sport and loved the sport and embraced the sport to my core. Mm. 